on an interval of 0 to pi, 2 pi, closed at 0, open at 2 pi, can the sine and the cosine values of a radian measure ever be equal? If so, where? Well, as you rotate the radius around at one point in the first quadrant, you get an isosceles right triangle, which means that the x and the y are actually equal to each other. And since we know the coordinate, x and y is equal to cosine theta and sine theta on the unit circle, we know then that sine would equal cosine. In fact, as we go around, in the second quadrant, they can't be equal because x is going to be negative, y is positive, and same in the fourth quadrant, they can't be equal because y is negative and x is positive. But in the third quadrant, x neg both negative x and negative y, so they can be equal again there. So we have two spots in which they are actually equal to each other. In fact, we can calculate the sine and the cosine since we know they're equal because the x and the y are equal. We can take x squared plus y squared equals 1, the Pythagorean theorem, substitute in the uh, x for y, get 2x squared equals 1, divide the 2 over, take the square root, and then rationalize, and we get square root of 2 over 2, which also has to be the y since they're equal to each other, and so we can find the sine and cosine. Describe the secant function. All right, so the secant function is the inverse of the cosine. So one thing we could do is we could graph the cosine function, just the standard cosine. We get something that looks like this, right? Starts at 1, goes through pi over 2 at 0. Now, the thing that's important is that because it's a reciprocal, that means that everywhere the cosine is 0, that means that we're going to get an asymptote. So all these spots where it's 0, we get asymptotes. Then, as the function gets close to 0, that means that we're going to get close to going to infinity. So that's our asymptotes. This is positive, then neg, you know, between when it's positive, it's going to go up, and when it's negative, it go down, and so you get these, like, U things. So you can see that as you get close to zero, the secant's going off to infinity. As you get close to one and minus one, well, the reciprocal of one is one, and the secant, so reciprocal of uh, minus one is one, so the secant touches the cosine at those spots right there. Then, of course, to dra actually draft, draw the secant, you would remove the cosine, and then you have the graph of the secant function. For any angle in quadrant 2, if you knew the sine of the angle, how could you determine the cosine? Well, this is just a Sokotoa problem, right? So I know that this, I can take the reference angle, push it over to the first quadrant, figure out what x the adjacent side has to be, because if I know sine, I could calculate the, uh, by the Pythagorean theorem, I can calculate the adjacent side by just taking h squared minus y squared, and then make it negative, and that would give me the cosine. Okay, so to for the following exercise, find the exact value of each expression. Well, these are the special angles, and... Once you can, once you know how to make a table like this, you can either memorize it the way it is, or you can, you can know how to derive it. That way, you don't have to work at remembering every little detail. You just know how to create it. So the way you create something like this is right. You have to know these angles, right? Zero and zero, pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, pi over two, and then zero degrees, three degrees, forty-five, sixty, and ninety degrees. All right. So then. All you have to do is, you start off like this. You write down 0. Just count. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we're going to take the square root. Square root is 0, 0. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 2, I don't know, so I just leave it like that. Square root of 3, I don't know. Square root of 4 is 2, so I change that into a 2. Now I divide them all by 2. 0 divided by 2 is 0. Um, so 0 divided by 2 is 0. 0 divided by 1 is 1 half. 0 squared of 2, but I divide 2. Square root of 2 divided, square root of 3 divided by 2. And then 2 divided by 2 is 1. And you have, you have your 
sine. Now, how do you get the cosine? Well, because there's that 90 degree rule, we know that the cosine of 90 degrees minus theta is equal to the sine. So, same sine of 90 degrees. So, that means that there's kind of a, a flip of these. So, you just have to take this list and write it down back from the bottom up. So, 1 goes up here, square root of 3, square root of 2, 1 half, 0. Now, that makes the first three columns, and that's pretty easy to create. Now, all, all you have to do after here is just use the identity. So, like, tangent is sine over cosine. So, 0 over 1, 0. Uh, 1 half over square root of 3. So, that 1 halves divide out, and you have 1 over square root of 3. And when you rationalize the denominator, you get this. Square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, since it's the same number divided into itself is just 1. Here are the 1 halves divide out. And you just left square root of 3. And then, of course, 1 divided by 0 is undefined. So there we go. Now, create the cotangent. All you have to do is just write this, the 90 degree thing. Undefined. Square root of 3. 1. Square root of 3 over 3. 0. Secant is just the reciprocal of cosine. So the reciprocal of 1 is 1. Recipro reciprocal here would be 2 over square root of 3. Rationalize the denominator. You get that. Reciprocal of this uh, is actually another way to write this would be 1 over the square root of 2. That's These these are actually equal to each other. And for this purpose, that's a nice thing to remember. Then the reciprocal is just square root of 2. And then, of course, the reciprocal of 1 half is just 2. And the reciprocal of 0 is not defined, so it's undefined. So again, the cosecant, just that 90 degree opposite thing going here so it's undefined two square root of three and they're equal and then one so you have actually the first set once you know really once you can create sine tangent and secant right you can create the cosine from you create the cosine from the sine you create the co tangent cotangent from the tangent and the secant from the cosecant so you create the cofunctions from the regular the the yeah the regular functions like that the sine or the cosine and you get a nice little table and any th time you deal with these functions even when they're secants and cosecants you can get you can do these quite quickly at that point once you get good at making the table like this because like what do you have here tangent of pi over four pi over four tangent is equal to one secant pi over three so you have pi over three go over to secant two so we have one and two All right, so for the following, use the reference angle. So now the key is, again, since these are special angles, you just have to find the right quadrant it's in. So you, if you have these two kind of pieces together, 4 pi over 3, well, that's down here in the third quadrant. We know both sine and cosine are down there, so I go secant. Now that's green, so it matches. You can see that these are cut nice and color-coded, so 60 goes with the 240 or the 4 pi over 3. So this is the same as the secant of, well, pi over 3, I guess, because that's what it would be there. And then because it's in the th third quadrant, we'd make it negative. So that means I go negative. Secant of pi over 3 is 2, so this should be negative 2, like that. Tangent of 330. So 330 is right here. So that would have the same reference angle as this one. So this is the same as the tangent of 30 degrees. Because that's its reference angles, because these are nice and color-coded. And then, now, sine the SIGN of the tangent here. Since I know that the cosine is positive and the sine is negative, this is positive divided by a negative, so the tangent would be negative here. So now I can go down and go to 30 degrees, go over to tangent, so I get minus square root of 3 over 3. And I have my uh, tangent of 330 degrees.